Hey, what's up everybody? This is David Wells with Serverless and today we're going to run through the new beta uh, setup steps for the serverless command line interface. So first things first, we need to get serverless installed on our machine. So we're going to go ahead and open up our terminal and we're going to go ahead and install the beta. Inside your terminal, go ahead and type in npm install dash g serverless at beta and hit enter. If you don't have npm installed on your machine, go ahead and head over to nodejs.org and follow the instructions on how to set up node and npm. So after we've installed the serverless CLI, if you type in which serverless, you can see, oh, it's on my computer, cool, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and create our first project. So I'm gonna go ahead and change directories into my projects folder. I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, the first project directory, my first service, let's just call it that. Cool, now I'm gonna change into that. And what we wanna do is initialize our first serverless project inside of this folder. And to do that, we simply type in serverless, create, dash dash template, and this is gonna be a Node.js project. So we're gonna run Node on Lambda. Run that, and boom. So if we look at our directory now and open this in our favorite text editor, we'll see the project has been scaffolded for us, including the function that we're gonna run on AWS Lambda and some configuration files, which we'll dive into here in a second. So we can go ahead and deploy this. If you set up your Amazon default profile on your machine, this will just work for you. If not, we're gonna run through those steps right now on how to grab and create your AWS credentials needed for serverless to act on your behalf. And just to double check, we're gonna run serverless deploy on our machine and it's going to give us an error. And this is the error that we're missing the credentials in our config file, in our the root of our computer. So we're actually gonna go ahead and set that up right now. So what we need to do is go over to the AWS console and sign in to our account. Once you've signed into your account, you want to go to the access identity and access management section and you want to go ahead and create a new user. So we're gonna create a new user. So we're gonna call this the beta user. You wanna just name this something that you'll remember. So I'm gonna go ahead and create. As it's creating, it will create your security credentials. This is what we need to set up on our local machine. So when serverless runs, it knows how to act on our behalf. So I'm gonna go ahead and download these credentials so I have them on my machine. Close this. And the final step here for our beta user that we just created, we need to attach a policy. And then choose administrator access. So right now, uh, serverless requires administrative access to your account. Um, we're working on paring this down to exactly what the CLI needs. But for right now, just give it administrative access and attach this policy. Cool, so now we have our user created in our uh, AIM section of our AWS account um, with the name of beta and it has administrative access. And we have the uh, access key and the secret token downloaded on our machine. So let's go ahead and set up our default profile on our machine. What we need to do is cd into the root directory of our machine and go ahead and create the .aws folder. This is where the credentials file is going to live. So make dir.aws. It already exists on my machine, so it'll create it on yours if you don't have it. And then I'm gonna cd into .aws and we need to create that credentials file. So just go ahead and type in touch credentials. That will go ahead and create our credentials file in this directory. 
So let's go ahead and pop this open in a text editor and add our downloaded credentials from AWS. So inside the credentials file, we need to specify the default profile. We also need to add the AWS access key ID and the secret access key ID. So we need to grab these values from that downloaded file that we have from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Say comma separated value. And here's my access key. So I'm gonna copy and paste that out of here. And here is the secret token. So I'm gonna copy and paste that out of here as well. Cool, so save that file. And now if we go back into our project in the terminal, so now we need to run deploy again, now that the credentials are saved. And then serverless will go ahead and create that stack for us. So this process takes around one to two minutes, uh, depending on how many resources you're using. Um, this is on the Amazon side. It has to create your uh, IAM roles and propagate that through the system. So it takes a little bit of time. And there we go. So the function, the Lambda function is now deployed on our AWS account. So what we can do is actually use serverless invoke pass it the function name, hello, and run that on AWS. And there it is, so it's returning the message that is coming from our project. That handler, here's that message. Go serverless version 1.0. Cool, so, and if we go into our AWS account, what we can see is here's our newly created Lambda function. And we can actually go ahead and see like the configuration and the monitoring and triggering of that function. Great. So we just run through uh, the first Lambda function. Um, what we're doing is manually invoking that via the CLI, but let's go ahead and expose this via the API gateway and actually have a live endpoint to trigger our custom function. So inside of the serverless.yaml file, if you scroll down to the functions and the handler, uh, you can see that there's a number of events that are kind of stubbed out for you. What we're gonna do is uncomment out the events and we're gonna keep the HTTP event in here. So we wanna make sure that the YAML is correctly formatted here. So what I'm saying here is, okay, expose an API endpoint at this path so users slash create, and it's gonna be a get method. So if I actually go ahead and save this, go back into my terminal, and if I go serverless deploy again, the second uh, time you're deploying a function, it's just gonna update it. It's much quicker than the initial creation process, so don't worry about that. So we're just going ahead and updating the stack and it's going to go ahead and configure API Gateway and expose this public endpoint for us to use. And boom, there we go. So we have, let's go ahead and go to this in our browser. So this path, we go ahead and click that, spinning up the function and boom, there we go. There is our message coming back from our function. So that is the quick tutorial uh, running through how you can create a function and uh, expose that via an API relatively quickly. Uh, again, you don't have to run through the uh, AWS credentials setup every time. Once you have that set up and running, uh, deploying and managing functions is a breeze uh, with the serverless CLI. So I hope you guys enjoy the beta. Uh, we're gonna have a post on the blog about all of the uh, new features and uh, new kind of functionality that we are releasing. So yeah, stay tuned to more videos coming out of serverless here in San Francisco and talk to you soon.